<laughs> Let's go to your ass. Well, this is what we'll do, okay? In the theme of the Department of Truth number one, and in celebration of the pre-order for Tyler Kirkham's varying color for us, we're going to ask somebody who is an expert in the Flat Earth Theory, uh, which is the first issue of Department of Truth, uh, Mr. Uh, Mark Sargent. Uh, we're going to get him in the line right now. I think he's still on the waiting lobby. And let's add him in right now. Hello, sir. How are you today? Hello. And thank you very much. Hello. For no, thank you for coming in. First, okay. I want to I wanna geek out first and say I love the Netflix uh, documentary and whatnot. Lewis can uh, testify on that because when we had our store, I had it playing in there. And oh God. the one... <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> the one main thing that basically I always tell him, why did you not get with the girl? That's that. that I'm that's very confused. I don't watch anything nowadays. Uh, the, 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 the girl who would have been uh, Patricia Steer, the um, yes, the, the femme fatale in this movie. Um, it just didn't work out. You know, it was one of those. It, first off, it was a long distance relationship. I was in Seattle right. and she was in Houston. Right. And right. I, I, she had a lot. Remember, she's really, really pretty. So she had right. a lot of guys. You know, the, the guy to girl ratio in the conspiracy world is heavy, heavy guy, even in the, in the um, uh, flat earth world. It's like, it's like, it's like seven to three in, in flat earth. And yeah, in comic book world too. And so. Still better she, odds than comic book world. No, there you go. <laughs> Better yeah. odds. Yeah, right. The odds are in your favor at that point if we're comparing yeah. <laughs> apples to apples. <laughs> so that, that was all. It was it was just a long distance relationship, and and uh, didn't we we realized that we were a better team on air than we were a personal couple. We came from two right. very very different backgrounds, and it's like, eh, right. I mean, we got along great. I mean, don't get me wrong, we could talk forever. But just right. no, no, it didn't really develop much more than that. Okay, well, well, let me ask you this: mm -hmm. Did you at least try? Oh God, yes. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> oh no, no, we we threw, we threw like, ourselves what? into it it's right like, away. I no. It's like I'm not an idiot. Of course, I tried, man. I'm not, I'm no, not, no, 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 no. Like, she she flew up here almost almost immediately uh, on her own without you know. I mean, I was amazed. I mean, she's she's really really tiny, and it's like. Wow, you don't know me. I could take you to a second location and bury you under a front porch. <laughs> yeah, uh, and but no, it, it, no. And of course we did. We we gave a uh, quite a shot, and just I don't know. Just we just couldn't sync up. You know what I mean? Right. We're and plus right. we're older. It's not if we were in our twenties. Oh God, who knows? But uh, we're we're older, and it's like eh, you know, we've done the song and dance with enough people. Yeah. But you're so, only you're only you're only as old as you feel. That's all. Exactly. No, oh, no, but, no, no, but. no. With Time age, it becomes easier to understand the relationship work or not versus like yeah. a 19 to 20-year-old would be like, just sex, and then we're good. I mean, you guys just still obviously keep in touch, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, she, she's she's fine. She, you know, in fact, uh, she went to the Dallas meetup, which we did last month. I was not there at that one. We've got a conference in October, which I don't know. Hopefully she'll attend. But if she does, she'll come by surprise. She and I got into a little falling out, though, because she, I, I left a conference early out of Denver because Logan Paul was the guest speaker. And nobody told me. You know who Logan Paul is? <laughs> Right. Logan. You know, yeah, I think he's in jail right now because of something. No, I think that happened. I think that's Jake. Jake Paul. Oh, that's his brother. His brother. Younger oh, brother. His brother. No, Logan Paul's the older brother. He's even more of a tool. And he was our <laughs> guest speaker at this conference, and nobody told this, the, anybody else. And twelve hours before everyone was supposed to go on stage, it's like, oh yeah, Logan Paul's a special guest. It's like, are you out of your mind? Are you kidding? Right, right. He's a professional troll. So right. I left. I left early on that conference. I didn't tell her. Ooh, yeah, hell hath no fury. Anyway, really, yeah. Well, I mean, like, I mean, like, uh, the Netflix documentary was actually pretty cool. Um, we played that in the store when we had a brick and mortar and whatnot. How long did well, okay? Uh, how, let me ask you this: How long did the documentary take, like, for them to to film you guys, or or at least oh, your take part? the whole thing? Uh, seven months. Seven, seven months. So they sure. followed you around for seven months. Yep, 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 yep. We started uh in the beginning of ooh, okay. they contacted me at the end of March. And I met with them. They flew up to Seattle, the the film team, in April. Right. And then we went around, obviously, different locations around the country. And then they went right. and visited Bob and Jared and, and other guys. 
And then that's insane. that's insane. Somebody following you around, bathroom, sleeping. Everything. No, well, it wasn't that intense. It was a it was a fairly bare bones operation. So they right. were, you know, they we weren't married to them like other projects were. And then they did editing all over through the holidays, and then they released it at the first film festival in Toronto at the beginning of 2018. Right. And right, then it right. went from there. Netflix bought it, and wow, go figure. Yeah, go figure. I mean, like, uh, it was actually pretty cool, though. So we, we played that in the store, and we had the store at the Thanks. time, too, as well. Uh, I Thanks. bugged the... Uh, I bugged Lewis about it, too, as well. I always put it on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so, so I mean, like... Let, <laughs> um, let me ask, uh, let me ask you this, not help. <laughs> uh Let me ask you this, though. Um, yeah. You've read uh, The Department of Truth, the first issue. I did. Um, I'm, I'm staring at it. I swear it's on the other side of my ooh. monitor right now. Yeah. So, I mean, like, um, now let me ask you this, though. Um, you are expert in flat earth theory. Uh, you are in, based on the documentary. They call you the yeah. god of, of uh, flat earth and whatnot. Um, yeah. But the way that you describe yourself, I mean, it seems like more like a Morpheus kind of thing in the Matrix. Like, here's the door. <laughs> you just have to walk into it kind of thing. Um, so I've never been called Morpheus, just so you know, but that's flattering. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, but it is. They're like, if you saw the Matrix, it's essentially like Morpheus told Neo, "I just showed you the door. You just have to walk into it, right?" Right, right, um, right, right. But let me uh, let me ask you this though: um, Do you think that James Tinian the Fourth had some of that right? Like, there is some sort of a, a government uh, that may be masquerading the truth with conspiracy in order to cover it up. And if it is, uh, if it is true. Right. Do you also believe that it would, um, it would pursue some sort of chaos with oh, society? God, yes. Yes, yes, yes to everything you just said there. Um, as I was reading it initially, you know, because I, I get comic books from time to time about various things. I, this one actually caught, you know, pulled me along as I was reading. It was actually very good. And by the time I got to the end, I mean, some of this stuff was straight out of the monologues I've done for for other people. And that is, yes, there are entities out there. <laughs> There are people that were much, much higher than the level of the president. I mean, octaves right. higher than the president that run things. Um, it is the first rule of power. The first rule right. of power is stay hidden, plain and simple. And that is you cannot be the puppet masters and the puppets simultaneously. It is the blessing and the curse of being the puppet master. Meaning if you are the people that pull the strings, you have to remain anonymous because you can never be overthrown if they don't know who you are. You know what I mean? Right, so, right. And, and as far as the, the, because people have asked me, lots of people have asked me over the last five years. It's like, oh, whoa, why not tell people? Why not tell the general public? You know, everyone from interviewers to celebrities, you know, there's all sorts of people that have asked me this question. It's like, look, and I talked about this in the clues, not the documentary, but the clues, which was, are you kidding? <laughs> but the big reason it's like, right, oh, why? Right. why, why keep it secret? It's like, okay, I think we'll, we'll just use Illuminati as a, as just a name. If you want to use one of your characters in comic book, that's fine. But right. let's just use the Illuminati or smoking men from the X Files or whatever, which is mm -hmm. they can't. You're talking about a system that is so big. We're talking if we live in a world that's basically has walls and a floor and a ceiling and it's like a big snow globe. And the the big key here is it wasn't even discovered. It wasn't even figured out until about 1960. Right. That that's quite a while. And it's like okay, well, it's not what the Illuminati would have to gain from it it's what they would have to lose because by 1960 right. our civilization has basically been built right everything else um, you know from 60 until now has just been kind of the icing on the cake all the technological right, right. advances everything else all the country lines have been drawn all the empires have been built well you're, you're potentially risking those you're sending shockwaves through the system which right. may not go very well and uh, real quick the the top three would be uh, academic um, forget about astronomy and astrophysics, those would have to be completely torn down, you know, and, and God knows what would happen then. But the remaining physical sciences like geology, hydrology, biology, archaeology, anything with anology, right? Those would have to be retooled from the ground up. And that's every university in every country. That's right, just right. academics. Economically, you'd have to suspend world markets for months just to figure out what it means because what does it mean I, even i really couldn't tell you exactly what it means and then last but not least would be the um the religious aspect of it you know you the the main right. five religious houses of the world um judaism hinduism uh, buddhism islam and christianity they right. would all be given leverage against science uh, simultaneously and they would be right. asked to show restraint after being be beat over the head with textbooks for the last five centuries 
because this is not going to happen. They would never stop with flat earth. They'd be like, oh, okay, right. let's look at uh, evolution and or carbon dating and the big bang and dark matter and blah, 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 blah. It would just never, ever stop. They, the science would be on the, the, the ropes for a while. Right. So yeah, it's the shortest Illuminati smoking man meeting ever. Literally, they say right. the table, it's like, well, what's the worst that could happen? And they just, you know, right. I rattle off what I rattled off. It's like, yeah, we're not telling anybody. Yeah. No. My, my, my like, question we're, is, we're keeping this we're keeping this under such tight lock and key that it doesn't become the manhattan project where you have hundreds of thousands right. of people refining uranium this is right. the perfect example of need to know and that right. is you should, if you're neil degrasse tyson you don't need to know brian cox the president of the united states hell even the joint chiefs may not know all all the aspects of it because you want right. them acting naturally you can't they'll, they'll freaking lose it um, right. the, the great a great movie that touched on this because I know you guys are probably into movies. Um, independent film from 1979, Capricorn One, brilliant movie about a fake, not just a fake moon mission, but a fake Mars mission, which was right. made by a, a, a CBS affiliate that hated the moon mission production so badly. He's going hell. I can make a better moon mission. Right. This heck, I could make a better Mars mission. And right. the the point was is that nobody knew. All of NASA. 99% of NASA doesn't know anything. Only the telemetry guys. Only the, right. And by, by telemetry, I mean once that rocket gets out of visual range, it goes into right. telemetry guys, which is like, okay, where's the rocket? And then it's just math. Well, then you can yeah. just make whatever you want. Well, we say the rocket's there. It's not there. <laughs> right. well, you, you don't know. And right. that's that's how it works. So anyway, my, yeah. My, my, my question is, is this, though. If, yeah. if, um, if you know and everybody else in the community knows that yeah. by exposing what is uh in your words the truth right would that and knowing that that would ensue chaos within the you know within a society right. why 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 do, ex why do it then yeah. why do it you know it's a, that's a great question and i've had i had to wrestle with that for a while five years ago but then i came to the conclusion that in 1960 we weren't ready, not even close. I mean, come on, we, that the whole Roswell debacle, my, you know, they released that in the papers and people started to panic within like a day or two. And then the Pentagon's like, oh, no, 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 weather balloon, weather balloon. 1960, they realized no one was ready for this. But now look what we have, the infrastructure is there. It's ready to go. You've got high speed internet, you've got uh, social media and you've got 6 billion smartphones. If you want to push a narrative out there to your liking, if you're the powers that be, you can do it now. Now you have mm -hmm. a chance. Did, no, I'm not disagreeing with, with the comic in that sense. You know, maybe they haven't gotten that far, but right. but I don't think because people have asked me, it's like, okay, why? Like, why is this being allowed to resonate out there? Why did the Netflix movie get made? Um, why did the the book deals and all these other stuff? Why is all this stuff happening? And why did YouTube promote it pretty much incessantly for the first three years? I think we're being helped. Uh, you know, I think we're doing some of the work for them, which would fit their mo. Which do you is, believe you know, that? Um, do you believe that James Tynan probably is helping you guys do in terms of the cause that you guys are trying to do? I, I I do, but but not for our cause. I think there's an ulterior motive there, and that is I've I've said since the very beginning that Flat Earth seems to be the picture frame for a canvas we haven't seen yet. Meaning, right. without Flat Earth, you don't have enough people that are open minded enough to to stuff to to lay out the big thing, whatever it is. What and I I kind of right. use it's like. Um, flat Earth is like the left jab before the big right hook. And people's like, well, what the hell's bigger than Flat Earth? It's like, well, it's a pretty mm -hmm. short list at that point. Right. Then you're talking either um, the reveal of finally of another civilization that's been living amongst us uh, right. or, the, you know, the divine in whatever form you, yeah. you want to throw out there. Right. I mean, come on, let's face it. Um, one man's advanced tech is another man's deity. If a golden so, spaceship so, so, landed in so do you believe that what James uh, Tinian said on the first issue of um, of the Department of Truth is actually true? That because since since he's complying all these conspiracy theories into each issue, each yeah. issue deals with a different kind of conspiracy theory. Do you think that based on what he said, those are actually the bigger picture, or on your words, the big right hook? You know, because the issue number two deals with satanic panic, and then they're also going to be with the RV Hoswald. How, like in this book, he's actually the, the head of the Department of Truth that he's still alive, didn't really shot. That's Kennedy. that's by, by the way, that's an interesting wrinkle uh, on the whole JFK thing. I was a big fan of the whole JFK conspiracy thing, down to where 
um, yeah, I always thought he was a patsy, and uh, I always thought it was the the driver uh, of the car itself that, that took him out. I think there were multiple shooters, and nobody could get a good bead. You know, it's tough to shoot somebody when you're under pressure, especially a moving mm -hmm. target. You know? Right. And I think the, he the the driver was a failsafe. the The legend goes is that uh, the driver actually pulled out a, a you know a silenced forty five. And shot him point blank range, and it's like, look, right. be, like, why would he do that? It's like, well, because they're under orders. These guys are soldiers, no different right, than the right. astronauts. So, right. um, do do I think? By the way, there's I'm I'm a big fan of a lot of different conspiracies, but I'm not exactly a tinfoil hat guy because for me, the qualifier is <laughs> is it for the greater good? Does the mm -hmm. end by the mean? And by the greater good, I mean the empire. You know, the, the guys that, that pull the strings, you know, because they have to make a lot of decisions that the general public can't make. And so right. my qualifier, if I look at any, con any conspiracy, is like, okay, would I have done it differently or could I have done it better? And right. if I can't, if I understand it, it's like, oh, yeah, I see what they were doing there. Huh. Yeah. If yeah. I, so, so my, my other question would be is this, though. If you believe yeah. that uh, there is a government entity or there is the government entity is yeah. keeping the truth from people by spreading uh, spreading these as conspiracy theory. Why right. demand to actually expose it and let people know instead of working with the government and actually say, let's roll it out slowly so it doesn't consume chaos? You mean, why don't we do that line? What's well, like, why don't we petition yeah. the government and say, well, because we, we've seen that in the past. Or, or, I mean, I mean, like, or, or like like yourself, because yourself is basically, you're basically the the, the head of like the, the movement itself. That's the way I'm, I look I'm more of a freshman right? recruiter, but if you want to say head, that's yeah. fine. So, so, um, so Morpheus. So, so, so there's an Oracle and there are the Morpheus. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let's put it that way. So uh, why not why not get why in not touch with the these government, government entity? Information, that sort of thing. Yeah, so why not just work with them and say, you know what, it, you know, this we know this is happening. Why not work together and roll it out uh, really slowly? They they're really picky about when they release things. Come on, the Freedom of Information Act and all the petitions, look at the UFO crowd. The UFO mm -hmm. crowd has been asking for that for decades. And my mm -hmm. God, the, the the military just, especially the Air Force, just dances around that issue. It's like, oh, there might be something up there. No, officially, there's nothing there. I mean, you got to remember that um, Area 51, Groom Lake, right, officially still does not exist. It still doesn't exist, even though with HD camera, you know, they, they've shot movies of this thing. There's videos of this thing all over the place. It's a massive, massive right. base. And all the employees right. come in from Vegas. They won't even admit that. In fact, I'll give you one more. It, it's perfect. You know why, why we can't work with them? Mm -hmm. um, look at, forget about yeah, the U-2 spy plane, right? right? The United States did not have a spy plane until the U-2 was shot down. And then it was like, right. oh, well, okay, you know, we got that, right? But my favorite was the SR-71. The R SR-71 right. went from cradle to almost grave, even though we still use it now because it's such a great plane. Went from cradle to grave, and then the, the, the Air Force shows off and says, oh, yeah, by the way, we're decommissioning the SR-71. What's that? It's our newer spy plane. Really? You got a spy plane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Air Force general, I loved him so much when they asked him, it's like, so what are you replacing it with? No, nothing. It's like, what? Right. Uh, and, and everyone knows. <laughs> and now we know we're probably into the Aurora Project, something that's so incredibly fast that by the time you hear it, it is gone. You will never get your cell right. phone up in time. So right. no, we're sorry. We can't work with, with them. Yeah. But th then again, rolling the stuff out the way we had, if they want to stunt us, they could have. They could have done it through software algorithms very, very easily, right. especially through Google right. and YouTube, and they didn't. Right. So let, let me ask you this too as well. I have a couple of questions too as well. The um, sure. There is a rise of a conspiracy group. I can't pronounce what their what their name is. Quanon or Quanon or something like that. QAnon or something Q -Anon? like that? QAnon? Yeah, QAnon. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, does is does it get frustrating for you guys when people try to compare you guys to those guys too? Be more of like... Uh, no, I mean, I'm a big believer of, and producers will tell you this all day long, that any publicity is good publicity. Uh, I mean, we got to remember, we were scraping for stories back in 2015, you know, when Forbes magazine interviewed one guy that, you know, that um, had come out of prison and they were asking about flat earth. It's like, oh, wow, they actually mentioned us. And now, and then right. the next thing you know, Jaron's complaining because Newsweek is picking on him. It's like, dude, is that the biggest thing right. you have to complain about? 
So no, 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 no. I don't. Are you kidding? I, in fact, I love yeah. the troll even more than people that compare us to other conspiracy uh, groups. Right. You know, the, the trolls that come out and dedicate channels and just come. I wish we had a thousand more just like them. Right, right. So, so, so uh, my other question is this, though. Um, yep. You know, I'm Canadian, so I, I like to hear things, uh, other people's side and whatnot. I'm a little bit right. more, you know, I'm kind of like. I want to hear your side kind of things. And I like to get like information. My wife sure. tells me it's, it's called useless information. I sure. always tell her a couple of information, but then she uses it later on in conversation. Right. <laughs> I just randomly just tell her facts and one. Um, why not uh, try to meet the middle ground between like, say um, someone who uh, like me and Lewis, who believes the, the, the earth is round and right. the flat earthers and say, Hey, wh why not? We can just like, you know, meet in somewhere, like in the middle, and let's explain my point of view and then explain right. your instead of actually headbutting each other and be like, no, we're right and you're wrong. Well, and we, we actually do, believe it or not. Um, in the first chapter of the, the latest book I wrote, you know, I said, first off, I say, look, if you like the way your life, it, you, you like your life the way it is, then don't don't look at this, you know, uh, because it is a mm. rabbit hole. No, no question. And also don't forget that everybody that gets into this topic hates it. Everybody mm -hmm. thinks it's just a horrible piece of crap. And right. and and the t-shirt the literally reads, I became a flat earther because I tried to disprove it. Same thing with me. I tried to right. disprove it literally, I mean, you know, for nine months. Other people, most people right. take like two weeks, two weeks to three weeks. So no, are you kidding? We, you know, I tell, it's like, well, I'm not here to, to convince you or persuade you. I'm just here to throw out an idea and put a seed in your head and see right. what happens. Um, right. You're going to figure it out on your own. It's probably one of the most unsatisfying part of, of our group is that you never see the person flip. You know, you, right. I'm not going to convince you guys right now. One of you right. or some of the people that you're listening, they may actually do some research. And then all of a sudden you're going to get an email. It's like, hey, you know, that guy wasn't that crazy. Right. So it, it's, what, it's all right. What's we, don't, the we, most, don't mind what's... Butting, we don't mind butting heads. We don't. Right. What's, what's the most frustrating uh, within the flat earth movement? Uh, from round orders like me and Lewis, what's what's the, the most, most frustrating thing that you guys like encounter, or at least yourself? Um, there, there's some standard answers we get. The most frustrating answers are probably the ones we hear the most. Um, I'll give you one. I'll give you one real quick. The, the probably the one the most frustrating is, and it's not because I'm I'm upset at the people in question. It's because of the right. conditioning. It's straight out of Orwell, which is the the five lights, four lights thing, which right. is. You, you know, lots of people, I can't count the amount of people that says, have you been on an airplane and seen the curve? I right. walked out the window, seen the curve. Then, but I've right. also had people said they've seen it from a balloon and I've also had people right, said right. they've seen it from the beach. Right. And, right, right. and like, okay, but then I could show you, you know, maybe I'll paste it in chat when I'm done. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson came out on a, a presentation recently and he was criticizing the Red Bull jump which was at 130,000 right. feet because it showed this severe over-exaggerated curvature. And he's going, he thought that was right. scientifically dishonest. And he said, you can't see uh -huh. the curve from 130,000 feet. It's like, uh -huh. you can't see it. Well, that's a problem because uh -huh. how can he say that nobody can see it from 130,000 feet and yet everybody I talk to on the other side of the fence says they can see it from an airplane. Isn't he right. wrong? Right. And so th that part is frustrating just because, but I don't blame them. I'll, I'll use, in fact, I'll geek, I'll geek you guys here. Um, Star Trek Next Gen, great right. episode with Picard when he was captured by the Cardassians at the end. And they were doing this, the classic thing where it's like, he looks, he sees, they, how many lights do you see? Four. Well, and he's, they said, no, it's five. And they just kept beating him, right? And at the end, right. when he rescued, he says, you know what? He goes, the scariest part wasn't just before I got rescued or anything like that. The scariest right. part is just before you picked me up, I saw five lights. It's not that you see the curvature. You right. want to see. Yeah, and that's, and by the way, all the pilots that I've talked to said the same thing. That's where they just, their minds get blown because right. they see, when they see out the front of an airplane, it's absolutely flat. Right. But they know it's a curve, right? Because right. that's what we're told. Right. Right. So which is. It? So, so let me, let me ask you this though. What yeah. would take? What 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 would it take for, uh, for someone you need to that, be convinced that, that it was a globe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure you get that all I, I the do time. Get that. So, no, not so all the time. It, but uh, but yeah. usually I get it from bigger hitters. Usually I'll get it from, right. from mainstream. It's like, what will it yeah. take? You know, for you and you know, it's like if we put you into space right now, it's like, would you? Of course, you have to put me in space, but you don't have to put me in space. Take a 4K yeah. camera or whatever is that they're out there right now. Put it on the top of a capsule, point it down towards the launch pad, send it up, 
do not hit pause, do not hit edit, do not do anything to it, and show me uh -huh. the Earth start to form into a ball and have that sucker leave orbit. It's never happened in the history of space travel. <laughs> Statistically speaking, I don't know how that's even possible, especially right. with the Elon Musk Tesla in space. That's number one. But if you don't want to spend the money and do a 4K camera, you know, in space, you know, looking down. By the way, no astronaut has ever taken a camera and spun 360 degrees ever on the moon anywhere. Find me it. Right, right. Also statistically impossible. And that's the first thing you would do on the moon. Uh, the other one would be the spacesuit challenge, which is the spacesuit defies the law of thermodynamics. Therm mm -hmm. Thermodynamics says that pressure cannot exist next to non-pressure without a barrier, right? You know, uh, vacuum. You know, like, you know, when you're you're in an airplane and, you know, you've seen the stories, right? Somebody breaks a window in an airplane and they get sucked out because, you know, right. the, the massive pressure difference. Well, and, and when you put anything in a vacuum chamber, especially a soft thing, it blows up to get really, really hard, like a basketball. Everything explodes in a vacuum chamber. Right. We all know this. But a spacesuit doesn't. Right. Spacesuit space suit is perfectly flexible. Arms and knees right. and everything. Everything bends perfectly. What what right. in that backpack uh, could, stops the vacuum of, of space or a vacuum of any kind? And so my challenge was, right. give me a, loan me a spacesuit. I don't want it. Put me in a vacuum chamber. Pull the switch. Right. Tell me what happens. Tell me right. why why does that suit not become a basketball? I tip over and die. Tell me how right, that right. happens. So yeah, right. those two would go a long way. One of those two would go a long right. way. L L L I got I have a two part question for you. Uh, one is, uh, do you believe in time travel? I do. I'm a huge right. time travel fan. I so, I've got, I, okay. I go during this whole pandemic thingy. I've been like right. doing searches for time travel movies that I may have missed. So now, so now, since you believe in time travel, do yeah. you believe in Einstein's theory about time travel that if you were to actually fly um, around the world, yeah, the fast Superman enough, and Earth from Superman okay, too? I was gonna right. say like the yeah. Superman thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you uh, would you believe in that theory of time travel? Since if the world is actually flat, you can't yeah. really go around it because it's flat. You just yeah. kind of go around and. In the in the outer region, right, right, where, right, the, right. where the where the ice thing is, right, uh, right. the ice wall is. So essentially, do you believe if you believe in Einstein's theory of time travel? Do you believe? I mean, sorry, believe in time travel? Do you believe in that theory of time travel that if you go fast enough, uh, that you can actually go back in time and see yourself, kind of like the whole Flash thing, kind of thing? Uh, yeah, Superman. yeah, I know. I mean, which way do you want to go with this? Um, yeah, super. I, I usually take because most of the movies don't deal with the Superman Flash version of time travel. You know, with Flash, you basically, I don't know why he doesn't time travel basically all the time. Um, and Superman, too. You know, once he did it the first time, for God's sakes, you'd never have a crisis ever. Um, unless he wants to listen to his father all day long. Um, but I do believe in inter interdimensional and other forms of time travel. You know, bending, however you want to do it. I don't want to get into the quantum physics of it. But do, I do believe in other times, types of time travel. But as far as right. the whole Superman thing, nah, yeah. probably not. It, going so fast around, you know, yeah. a, a particular thing to make it. Yeah. I don't know exactly how that was supposed to Cause, work. Because essentially, essentially his theory is that, let's just say if you go, uh, if you take a tree and you run around the tree fast enough, you can actually see yourself running. And that's technically what we time travel would be. Because right. essentially that's how like, you know, the gravity and then basically the gravity will be uh, yeah, a lot more stronger in the middle kind of thing. If you're going to go down that road and I do you know, seriously, we could spend, I mean, just like looper. I, I, right, right, right. We, we could go crazy talk about the different things for me. I, but I also believe in, in uh, different timelines, you mm -hmm. know, parallel universes and that sort of thing, because time travel right, get right. tricky. And then right. if we're talking time cop, what is you know, is it true? You know, I thought it was a great gimmick. You know, can you, if you touch right, yourself, right. you know, is there a big explosion? I don't know. Right. I don't know. But time travel is a wonderful coffee. thing to ponder. How's that? Yeah. The other thing that I want to touch on too, as well, is that when I was uh, emailing you back and forth, you said that you used to own a comic book store. What happened? I did. It? I did. Um, well, <laughs> full disclosure, the comic book store was initially a, because it was short lived, was initially a front for an illegal fireworks operation that I was running <laughs> out of campus. Back uh, in the day, I seriously, I was selling, I was selling fireworks to the uh, Native American reservations up there, and we needed a place to, you know, a legitimate business front, and so we came up, and we, we were all big fans uh, of comic books, and so we we got the baby ready, and I think we were only open maybe three four months, 
before the whole ATF bust thing happened. It was it was horrible. But <laughs> so you had a door. So you had a door at the at the back of the comic book store. No, that no, opens no, 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 up no. It was there. Strictly, there. It was strictly there to launder money. That's all it was there to do. It was not. I mean, I mean we were going to sell comic books, and and seriously, we had some great people working it, and that was back when. Uh, you know, late eighties, mid, mid to late eighties is when, you know, I, I first got into it and, uh, right. I, you know, it was called comic book justice, not my title, but whatever. Cause it was, right. um, it was a playoff of the first computer graphic novel, which was a Batman one, of course, called uh, digital justice and wasn't very right. good, but it was interesting graphics for 1988 or something like that. Right. Mm. Well, let me ask you this before uh, before we let you go here. I know you're you're a very busy man, but um, it, you only read issue one, uh, Department of Truth. Yeah. Um, do you believe that James uh, Tinian the Fourth is about to reveal some stuff that at the end of the arc, possibly issue six or seven, at the end of it, you're gonna go, he's exposing a couple of things right now. I think he's almost right, and then you guys can like almost piggyback on that or almost I mean, it, it wouldn't surprise me the truth. It, it wouldn't surprise me he seems to be pretty much at the top of the food chain aside from whoever built this place uh yeah. and and that's that's sort of that the sort of plot line it's going right now sure i mean he's pretty much wired into just about everything you can think of so why not i mean he, if anyone knows all the most of the secrets you know does yeah. he know all of them eh, maybe not maybe there's some they're still trying to work out right. Uh, right. Are still looking for, but how, yeah, I how, love it. How accurate was he on the first issue? The fact that there was a bunch of millionaires and billionaires that know about this, and that there is a station uh, by the wall, and the fact that they knew about the moon landing and all that stuff. How accurate it, is the uh, based on your knowledge? I think it's pretty. It's pretty darn accurate. Uh, you know, Antarctica is locked down. You know, from all corporations up until the year 2041, the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties, which no one talks about. Right. And yeah, would are there billionaires out there? And by the way, I'm not when I say billionaires, I'm not talking about new money, you know, like uh, Gates and Bezos and, and uh, Musk yeah. and those guys. We're talking about people that have had money for a long, long, long time. Yeah, yeah, like the the rock the, uh, the, the Rothschilds, the Rothschilds, the Bilderbergs, you know, guy people that have so much money that they could topple governments just by flooding them out if they wanted to right. with currency. So yeah, no, I, I thought it was good. I thought I thought yeah. it was, I thought I like where it was going. Seriously, there's a lot of right. you know I've read a lot of comic books over the years, right. and when I got to this, it's like yeah, you know what? As I was getting into it, I was like, not bad, not bad at all. Right. Yeah, there you go. So. Again, this is, uh, if you guys are listening to us on Spotify, that was Mark Sargent there, uh, just definitely laying out some knowledge in there. Mark, I know that you have an audio book, uh, audio book too as well, right? Tell, tell I us do. About a little um, bit about your book. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I, I, there's three books uh, on Amazon right now, Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit, Flat Earth Clues, The End of the World, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, a survival manual called Empty Shelves, and there's audio versions of all of these. On there, right. which which you can you know read if you want, and right. the Netflix documentary, of course, is called Behind the Curve, and yeah. I do various podcasts. But my YouTube channel, don't even worry about the YouTube channel name; it's just my name. But you can just type in Flat Earth Mark into YouTube or any Google search engine, you'll find me. Right there, you go. That's Mark Sergeant right there, Lewis. I know that. Uh, I know Lewis. You're a little bit of an intern. And I know you're just listening in. Uh, do you have any questions for Mark? I know you're just like kind of taking this all in. To be honest, Lewis. I've been looking at two swirls for your images the whole time. <laughs> two swirls of image? What's wrong with your yes, internet? Yeah, loading and loading and loading and loading. <laughs> and like, it, it, like I was listening to everything you guys were saying, but it was like listening to the deaths of my soul going insane. You just, you just see like the colors swirls, <laughs> just swirling. <laughs> the I don't to hear it. We were talking for about 30, 45 minutes. I'm like, what is he staring at? <laughs> now I know it's just like, a bunch of swirls. <laughs> some point, you might have just seen me do this. <laughs> That's too funny. Uh, Mark, thank you again for uh, being on our show in here. And uh, basically, yeah, uh, what, what, what I would tell people is that, you know, um, you know, a lot of people canceled out Flat Earth all the time and kind of make fun of it and whatnot. You know what? Sure. You, you, and the, the thing is, is that 
just hear them out. It doesn't have to be, you know, if you believe that the earth is round, great. Just like me and Lewis, we believe the earth is round, you know, and Mark believes that it's flat. But the thing is, is that you just have to, uh, you know, listen to them and then see what their point of view is. And like Mark said, he's not here to change your mind. He's just here no. to tell you his point of no, view. No. Right? It's, so, it's, um, it's, can I throw in one more thing? I mean, look, yeah. it's like, Look, whatever, all the things I've been saying to you right now, take it with a grain of salt. Do your own research. Don't believe anything I say. Figure it out for yourself and decide if it's worth your time or not. But again, I'm going to tell you right now, don't do it if you think you're going to go into it casually because it could end up biting you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Mark, thank you again uh, for being the show. Um, yeah. Definitely watch the Netflix show too as well, Behind the Curve. It's really nice. Uh, when you guys see it, you're going you're gonna to think the exact same way as I did. Let's, I mean, come on, Mark. Patricia's right there with the popcorn. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Just make a move. <laughs> right. Nice. Thank you again. Thank you again, Mark. And uh, I'll definitely get back to you in a little bit then. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Lewis, how mm. did you, uh, how did you find that, uh, the whole thing? I mean, like, it doesn't really, it doesn't change your mind. That's the thing. It doesn't change my mind. I still think that the uh, the earth is round. Everybody knows that. I don't, I don't feel but, like you know, his, but, the, but like hearing his, his talking points right? were to change your mind. It was just to give you his point of view and yeah. maybe make you curious on a new discovery you may or may not discover. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, like, I, I think that, um, I think that uh, he did. Um, he did has his point of views too as well. And then I wanted to get that Superman thing um, and see his point of view on it because um, uh, being a big Superman fan, it kind of like you know I just want to see what his point of view is because you have to go around the world. If the world is flat, how do you go around the world? Technically, you're just going well, around the edges. Well, if it's flat and it's like a disc shape, then same concept you're going around and around and around on a flat disc right 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 then you would get the same result it it does not matter if it's spherical or flat right right the, the uh, whole you know. the only reason it worked would be that he would have to have gained enough speed he needed speed he needed space to go around and that around does not mean around a planet but just like I could, you could have literally done laps around the fields for all right. you know, and then it would, as long as he reached that um velocity, it didn't matter. Right. Um. You know, Mark is a nice guy. He's a pretty cool guy. I love the fact that he said, <laughs> he's like full disclosure. Uh, my comic book store was a front for illegal fireworks. I'm just like, what? Uh, Wait I, a minute. I almost What's wanted, going on I here? wanted to ask, is it like, is it in Florida? Because not one would have cared. They only care about I know. I know. <laughs> you should have asked, like, was it in Florida? Because no one cared, Mark. <laughs> it's like, it's fine. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, it'll be fine. Actually, Mark, if you want, build another one. I'll run it for you. I'm like, I think you're that close of actually telling him that you'll run it for him. Um, but that has been an episode for um, uh, for uh, this week. So we got issues. Um, hopefully next week, Lewis will have his laptop, uh, in, um, uh, but, um, if you guys have any questions, let us know the department of truth comes out September 28th. Uh, and again, it deals with the first issue deals with flat earth, how, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald is still alive as an old man. He is the head of the department of truth. Our, um, exclusive variant cover with Tyler Kirkham is also out now too, as well. Uh, it's going to be on now. It's on for pre orders and then shipping happens on the week of September 28th. Lewis, any final words for everybody, uh, listening in round or flat earth people? Can finally you see have? you on screen. <laughs> say, say it again. Say it again. Hold on. You got cut off. Say it again. I can finally see you on screen. <laughs> There's no more swirls. You're not under anyone control anymore. And I like hypnosis. Like all your is like boring. <laughs> well, have your laptop next time, and uh, I don't know. Maybe you were under government control, and they're just like controlling you. I don't know what's going on. The Department of Truth got into you, man. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but 
<laughs> but but um and that's it uh one final comment from nathaniel though he said not going to lie this whole episode has me wanting to read the book i'm in of course the book was good man uh you know issue number two is already out too as well and deals with satanic panic back in the 80s that what me and lewis were talking about earlier so uh it's great uh james tinian uh literally hit it out of the park the question that you should be asking and i'm going to leave you guys with this and i'm going to leave lewis off with this mark said that uh what he mentioned on issue number one james tinian what he mentioned in issue number one is almost to the t he agrees almost everything is almost true. Is he part of Flat Earth or he knows more than what he leads to believe? Right? What is James Tinian hiding from us? <laughs> that, that he did research. Okay. I mean, like, come on, Lewis. Why do you have I to? I mean, like, 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 I know. Why, why, wanna... why, why do you have to rain on my parade there, man? God damn. Okay. Because oh, well, oh, we'll see I you guys. See perfectly. I see a perfectly good parade, and I just want to piss all over it. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Next week, we'll see you guys same time again. Lewis, piss out. Everyone, peace out.